really don't even think I made it to the front. Okay, guys, I think we're ready to get started now. Um, first off, thanks so much for being here for our third episode in season two of Line Change. Uh, we apologize for missing uh, last week. Um, we know you guys are probably going to have a lot of questions, given the fact we weren't here last week. So uh, I'll try to make my questions as brief as possible. Um, first thing I'm going to uh, do is introduce our uh, player guests here tonight. We've got Stephen Pirog and Marcus Ortiz. Let's hear a round of applause for these two. I know we were thrilled to get both of these two back in the fold for this season, and uh, they've both been uh, doing really well to start the campaign here. Um, first thing I want to ask, Coach, is this past weekend up in Peoria, you guys got an early taste of what that team's going to be like this season. They went through a massive overhaul over the offseason. They lost both their goaltenders. They lost half their defensemen. They lost their leading scorer and the best scorer in the SPHL, for that matter. And yet, it seems like they didn't really miss a beat. Um, what's your take on, on the way that team stacks up this season compared to what they were last year? Yeah, you know, when when you have a coach over there who's the all-time leader now, he's he's been in the game a long time, and he, uh, he knows what it takes to win and, and put teams together. So I already knew going into the weekend, um, you know, they were gonna they were going to be a pretty good team. And, yeah. um, you know, we didn't get the results we wanted, obviously, that weekend, but I thought we played them pretty well. Um, just couldn't get, couldn't score on their goalies. Both goalies played well. Atma played well. So, um, got a lot of positive stuff out of the weekend, and also got some stuff that we need to work on as well. Yeah, and one of those positives that I saw were, were the shots on goal. You guys outshot them both nights, um, thirty plus shots on both Friday and Saturday. Uh, the Mayhem weren't able to do that at all last season, so I think that was certainly a positive to be taken. Um, do you think there was any sort of change in tactics or personnel that might have uh, led to the increased uh, uptick that we've seen in shots so far this season? Uh, no, I just think it's normal hockey. I mean, you want to get pucks <coughs> in the net. That's something that I tell these guys is you're not going to score if you're not shooting the puck. And um, I think um, the problem that we did have over the weekend was we were getting a lot of shots, but they weren't the quality or second chances after that. So. Uh, a lot of the shots were perimeter, perimeter shots, and yeah. we got to do a better job of getting uh, bodies to the net and creating those rebounds and stuff like that. So um, I've already watched the video, and that's something we'll work on over the next two days for sure. Um, but any time you get 35 shots, that's at least some, somewhat of a plus. So we just got to work on the second chances after. Yeah, definitely. And, and Peoria's goaltending tandem, Eric Levine and and, uh, and Jeremy Brodeur, they actually both just got the SPHL goal or, uh, player of the week as a duo, which I'm not sure I've seen that before. So they played very well. But we, the good thing about that past series is that there's a quick turnaround. We get to face Peoria right back here this weekend and, uh, and get back to work. Um, so, Stephen, I'm going to address this next question to you. Uh, you're now the only player on the team who was with the Mayhem during the inaugural season. You played uh, 28 games here in the 2015-16 year. Yeah. Um, in ways both on and off the ice, what are some of the areas in which you think this franchise has grown? Um, definitely by the fans. Uh, when I first came here, um, the group, everybody, the whole organization has got better. Uh, it was a new team coming in. I knew. Uh, a lot coming in before with Kevin Kerr bringing me in. Uh, he told me there was a new team, new organization with a new city, and uh, they had to do a lot of a lot of rebuilding. And as I came in here till now, uh, it's more professional. Um, it's fun to be here. Great group of guys. Our staff is great, and uh, so far it's been great so far. It has been great for you. You've gotten off to a great start. Um, you really came out of the gates flying. You lead the team now with six assists. You've been a playmaking machine since coming back. Um, what's been key for you in making this adjustment back to a, a new team from last year and a new league uh, in, in getting on the board so well so often? Oh, I haven't had the greatest start. Like, like last two games, I wasn't that great. Mm. I, gotta, I gotta be better. <laughs> but um, I think it's just the guys who I play with, my line mates, the guys mm. on, on the ice are, uh, we're just, we have good chemistry. We talk before the game, uh, we have good plans. And I think it's just the preparation before um, being at a higher level last year to coming to here, it's not much of a difference. Um, everybody's a great hockey player. It's always so even. So we just have the right group of guys here. 
Yeah, and one of those guys, Marcus Ortiz, you've been sort of the opposite. You've been a goal scoring machine so far since you've been here. You lead the team with four. Um, do you attribute that more to the, you know, your, your off season regimen, which to me, you look a lot faster, by the way, um, this season? Or do you think it's been more just being in the right place at the right time and finishing? Well, I think both. I mean, both definitely help. Um, you know, we, we're professionals and we pride ourselves on what we do in the off season and getting ready for each season coming up and, you know, just that whole process. But, um, you know, this team is one of the most experienced teams I've been on. And uh, having such a few amount of guys with little to no experience is it's paid off. Uh, and, you know, I've just been a benefactor of it. But, I mean, I think it's pretty pretty clear to say that, you know, when you saw us play in game one, it was a night and day difference from sure. any team I've ever seen on the ice uh, at this level or even the next one. I mean, we have just about every element a team could have from physicality to speed to skill. Uh, you know, I think I think top to bottom, our, our forward group is the best one I've seen on paper, like, ever. Yeah, wow. That's a high praise coming from an SPHL veteran. Now, Marcus, um, You've explicitly told me you like playing here um, for several reasons, one of which is that it sort of reminds you of home a little bit. You're the, actually the only player on the Mayhem who is from south of the Mason-Dixon line, um, from the Dallas, Texas area. Um, what are some of the ways in which, I guess, uh, playing in this market is similar to, to where you grew up playing hockey in the Dallas area? Well, I just think the, the fan base, for the most part, is, is pretty mm -hmm. similar. You have that Southern-style fan. They like the speed. They like the physicality. You know, they like sound of the glass banging when people hit <laughs> each other. They like all that. <laughs> and then, um, you know, obviously the weather's pretty nice. That's, I don't know, that's a huge plus for me. And, um, I mean, to be honest, it's just the style of hockey is the way I was raised to play hockey. It's physical, it's fast, it's, you know, there's skill, but, you know, it's, it's always going to be a fast and physical affair. So that's just, that's pretty much how I was raised to play, so. Definitely, and that'll be the case again this weekend. Again, the Mayhem hosting the Peoria Rivermen this Friday and Saturday night. That's all the questions I have for Leo and the players here. Uh, at this time, I'm going to open the floor to you guys. Feel free to ask any question your heart desires. Only thing we ask is that you please pass around this microphone. We're going to make sure that, yeah, thanks, Sean, appreciate it. Um, we're going to make sure that uh, this gets saved and archived on YouTube so that people who uh, weren't able to make the show can listen to it and hear all of your questions. Should be on already. Yeah. Yep. Hey, coach. Um, most of the time, when players and coaches use the phrases like "we didn't come ready to play" or "we weren't prepared mentally" um, or something along those lines, they don't necessarily mean that in terms of you know, you know, they weren't physically, you know not ready to play, but just more in terms of execution. Um, so with Peoria coming right back, uh, how do you guys uh, plan to, uh, and finishing out the series, how do you guys plan to execute a little better this time out? Well, that actually starts with tomorrow at practice. Um, just get, make sure it's an up-tempo practice, and um, I got to do my job and make sure that if it's not right off the bat, that I kind of slow everything down and have that talk with them. But I think with the group we have, um, and the way we did play there, and we showed that even though we weren't mentally or physically there that first game, we still hung with them the whole weekend. So mm -hmm. um, I believe I believe in this group and the leaders that we have that we'll bounce back and we'll be ready for this weekend. So my question is for Leo. Uh, the start of the season, you got to play, um, instead of a weekend series against the team, like a back-to-back, -back, you played four individual teams, whereas now you have four straight games against the same team. How does that change your week in preparation, uh, and does that have any kind of a different feel going into those games? Yeah, no, it's way easier <laughs> that way. Um, obviously, after even the first game in Peoria, when I can actually sit there and watch video and it's the same team, and <clears throat> it just made everything that much easier. So um, it gives me these two days leading up to the weekend to actually focus on the stuff that we need to against the same team. So definitely easier playing back-to-back -back 
about the same thing. I usually like to ask the fun questions. <laughs> Um, so, hockey players are some of the most superstitious athletes ever. What is, you know, is there something that you guys do getting ready or a favorite lucky song, socks? What is it? <laughs> you, go first? you go first. All right. <laughs> well, usually, when I, if we win a game, I'd wear the same suit, same socks, everything underwear. before. Not underwear, though. <laughs> I'd wear the same suit to the game or whatever I'd decided to wear to the game. Okay, well, I guess I'm the more superstitious person out of the two. There's a couple other things. <laughs> I have the same pair of underwear I wear to every game. Obviously, I wash them, but I wear the same pair of underwear. Uh, I go you. through the same routine. Um, same tape job. Same tape job. Yep, same tape routine. Uh, every, everything down to I stole our game socks from our last home series and I told Evan that I had them, so I'd wear <laughs> no socks every time we wear blue jerseys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah there, there's a bunch of other things I've heard, too, so. But that is, that is correct. The superstition is real. Do you guys have any uh, prospects as far as goalie replacement? Yes. I got a kid that just came in today. Um, his name is Cody Porter. He was in this league last year for a little bit. So I'm um, going to sign him to a three-game contract. Um, we'll kind of just go from there. You guys are the first to hear the news. Yeah. So he's going to break it tomorrow morning. Damn. No, no, no. That's good. I like it. It's part of the exclusive. It's coming out to line change. Well, speaking of that, um, Stephen, uh, with Kev heading to Orlando, does the grind to improve defensively become more urgent, or does it stay the same as before? I think it's in in general our defense has to get better. But um, with Kevin gone, yeah, that hurts us for sure. But we got to keep going. Um, we have a good goalie coming back. Infantinos is an amazing goalie too, so we still have a lot of confidence from the back end. So it doesn't really change our game plan. We just got to keep getting better every day. Pranks. Last year, I know that uh, it could have been better. Leo is uh, disappointed in the, the lack of pranks. So what's going on this year? <laughs> I don't think we've done anything uh, yet. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. a different game. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually seen uh, Michael's, our assistant coach, put gum in Stathis' gloves yeah. every week once. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm the only one that sees it. Still does catch on to it. It's Still weird. Does. <laughs> uh, we haven't got that. We haven't got there yet. So, so we'll see. There's more pranks in the front office than there is down there, the downstairs. Mm -hmm. What kind of front office pranks are going on? Well, every morning for the past week, Tyler has terrorized me with some cowbells. I'll walk into the office and he'll be hiding behind a door and he'll jump out and start rattling the cowbells as loud as he can. Uh, I got him back though. I got him back yesterday. I had my brother call in and pretend to be an angry season ticket holder. And he left him a less than pleasant nice. voicemail. <laughs> That's good. Yep. You guys can learn a thing or two from us, it sounds like. I got some tricks. <laughs> All right. Uh, so my question is for uh, Steven. Um, being a good leader means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Yeah. To you, what does it mean to be a good leader? I think just to be somebody to follow, like somebody to do the things that people haven't done before. Um, just to welcome everybody as a family, like everybody here. Me, even me just being a captain, to me it really, it's nice, yeah, but everybody has a say on our team. Um, we're just one big family and everybody, everybody has a say on our team and I just get to represent it. Hey, Marcus, um, 
on s Saturday's game. It was pretty much anyone's game up until late in the second period. And unfortunately, uh, Peoria ended up getting that opening goal. So with the game on Friday, how important is it for you guys to uh, get that first goal before they do? Well, I, th I think it's definitely something we've stressed. Uh, you know, early in the season, it's it's always kind of hit or miss. It's it's hard to play catch up early in the season, that's for sure. Um, I think honestly, the urgency is on just scoring goals right now, um, which is something that I know Stephen and I have talked a lot about. Of, but that's you know one of our main focuses this week is we do we just got to get the first one. <laughs> We got to get the first goal at some point early in on in Friday's game just to put that little seed of doubt in uh, their heads and kind of reestablish ourselves with them. It's unfamiliar territory for them. They haven't trailed yet mm -hmm. in a single game. They haven't given up the first goal yet. It's definitely one of the objectives <laughs> for this weekend. So uh, one of the things that I've noticed in uh, hearing like interviews with football players and stuff is that they practice the two-minute drill like all the time because football games are usually really close at the end and that could be the difference between winning a game and losing. Whereas, and you can feel free to correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, that it seems like in hockey the like six-on-five shootouts, three-on-threes don't really get a lot of practice time. And this year, it seems like there have been a lot more games going to overtime, a lot closer one-goal games. Do you think that's something that, in general, teams should be focusing more on, whereas because a little bit more practice might mean an extra win, an extra two points in the standings? Or uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's something where when I got this job, I, when I played, I, we never worked on that stuff. So that's something when I started coaching, I, I'm like, man, I really got to start working on this stuff. And then... As you kind of get into it, there's so much other stuff that you want to work on in practice. So it's, it always almost gets pushed to the back. But um, that's something we're definitely going to work on this season for sure. Um, you know, even just last week or two weeks ago, I'm like drawing up six on five plays. And, you know, when I'm sitting at home and then I'm like, okay, we're going to, I got to fit this in one day of practice. And, you know, other things come up all the time. So but that's definitely something that's a good good point that's something that I definitely want to work on with this team and um, shootouts is something we work on every week anyway um, just for the goalies and stuff like that so um, that honestly didn't help us last year I don't think we won one shootout last year either so um, but it's crazy we do at least one shootout a week or two so um, but definitely yeah three on threes and six on five and four on fours even there's something that uh, I'm definitely going to find time to work on this season for sure. Uh, this is the first time I'm doing this. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so this is for anyone, any one of y'all four guys. Do y'all believe in ghosts? Ghosts? Yeah. I do, man. Yeah. Same. Right. Who are you gonna call? <laughs> 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 I'm not gonna call anybody. All right. I'll, I'll probably uh, have an accident or something and <laughs> clean my pants or something. I don't know why we don't do a Ghostbusters night. I know. I'm old school Ghostbusters, though, like Dan Aykroyd and stuff. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm older. Yeah. So. Uh -huh. Who are the new go Ghostbusters? I think they're all they're girls, girls, aren't they? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's all girls. Yeah, yeah I'm old school, man. Yes. I know a guy who knows Bill Murray. He might be able to make some phone calls. Yeah, Chicago, right? Yeah, right, Chicago boy. Kind of stemming off of that three-on-three three question from er earlier, Coach, do you guys have, and because everywhere I've worked, there's been some sort of, after practice is over, some sort of incentive for players to score in the shootout so that they don't have to, for example, run laps or go pick up pucks or pick up the nets. And uh, Do you guys have anything like that? Do you do games to make it sort of fun for the, yeah. for the shooters and the goalies? Yeah, anytime we do, like, um, a small area game as well, we'll mm -hmm. have something where the loser's got to skate or do extra um, we had one in Columbus where <laughs> it was a two-on-two -two game and the losing team had to take their skates and socks off and had to walk off the ice. So, um, and then <laughs> it's cruel and unusual it's called punishment. called the Jesus Walk. So, yeah. <laughs> um, that was pretty cool. But then, yeah, um, on shootouts, I let the guys do their own thing. Usually the loser's got to um, 
get juice. Yeah, or give Gatorade to everybody on the team or be mm-hmm. the trash boy for at the, the week apartments. at the apartments. Yeah. Bunch of fun stuff. What's the longest amount of times it's taken somebody to score in a shootout in a practice that you guys can That had to be two weeks ago. Yeah, that was <laughs> a couple weeks ago. It was, I almost had to stop it. Like, <laughs> like our goalies are good, but it's Danny and <laughs> it took, uh, honestly, 20 minutes, I think. I think I tried to stop practice at an hour and 20 minutes or something, oh and it was almost goodness. two hours long after that shootout. Yeah. I guess we, we won't name names. We don't want to embarrass Yeah, I, I couldn't even remember. Who. <laughs> I know P-Rock was. <laughs> Good question so far, guys. Since you brought up the apartments, I thought I'd ask you guys this one, because uh, most of you guys live with roommates throughout your, you know, time playing here. So, uh, who has been your favorite roommate in your hockey career so far? That's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> favorite roommate. Um, I was good friends with, I was playing in Greenville last year, uh, Chad Duchesne, he was an assistant captain there, he kind of taught me the ways a little bit, and learned more about the ECHL, and uh, him and I became pretty close, so, he's a c- Canadian boy too from Kingston, close to where I'm from, so we kind of kicked it off pretty well. Uh, I've lived with Danny Caesar for the last two seasons I've played uh, here in Knoxville, so, yeah, I think, yeah, he's pretty clean, that's why I like him, so. <laughs> How does he manage to keep that beard clean? <laughs> no, that I don't know. You can't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Leo? Favorite roommate? Oh, wow. Yeah, I'd probably say um, this is my second last year playing. He might have been there before. He uh, was a Czech Republic kid, kind of a young kid, so mm-hmm. kind of took him under my wing and kind of just soaked up everything, was a great kid, um, you know, had to teach him English, and I was, he called me Papa, so he was like, <laughs> he was, I think he was 20 or 21 or something, I was in my early 30s, so great kid though, we still talk to this day, and um, well, he was here actually, our, my first year coach, and he was here for that season, so, um, but yeah, I'd probably say him. Nice. You like a little status. Uh, so my question is for uh, Stephen. Um, so you won uh, a Memorial Cup in juniors. You won a championship. Lost the Memorial Cup. Lost. Ouch. Lost. Yeah. Sorry, Hockey DB lied yeah. to me. That's I know. Th- we won in the OHL. It would have been. Oh, okay. Oh. Sorry. You won. won the the, that OHL. was what it was. You won the OHL. <laughs> Opening old wounds. Uh, but still, that's a that's a pretty big. You won a championship here, and you've also been on some teams that were not so great. So what would you say besides talent were the biggest differences between those teams? Between like my the, like the you're worst like you're and the best, but yeah, I think it would be the off ice things like guys click. Like a big thing in hockey is creating a family because we we see every everybody we see these guys every day more than our like we come here we we see them twenty four seven. So I think it just the friendships that you make, the, the better that we did, the um, it just came down to like the friendship pretty much and everybody getting close. Um, when I played on those other like Peterborough, when I played there, we had a lot of clicks. Guys that kind of drifted away, didn't really hang out with guys outside. Guys were only just trying to make the NHL, worrying about themselves. Or, mm-hmm. But the, when I got traded to Guelph, it was completely different. Um, the change from friendships to where everybody, everybody hung out with everybody outside of the rink. Um, we ended up becoming all best friends, and then we ended up winning the whole thing. So, But losing in, in the finals, but it was, it was a hell of a year. Uh, this one goes for uh, our fourth member on the stage, Alex. Um, so having had the opportunity to really sell hockey in the middle of Georgia area, what would you say makes the SPHL such a, or a legitimate hockey league and for those not familiar with the sport as a whole? Sure. Well, the SPHL has taken great strides towards improving um, in several areas. The league's gotten a lot younger. It's gotten a lot faster. It's starting to serve as almost like a direct pipeline to the ECHL now, whereas 
in leagues past, it was, you know, it, it had a stigma to it. And um, it's definitely helped to grow the sport of hockey in the South. Um, some of these markets you're seeing that you wouldn't expect to be uh, hockey hotbeds. Um, these guys, everyone up here on the stage can attest to it, but, um, you know, places like Pensacola, Huntsville, um, you know, Birmingham, those places get loud and the fans are very passionate and we're building that here too. And we saw towards the end of last season just how, how loud this place can get. And it really doesn't take much. It doesn't take, you know, more than a couple thousand fans to make the place rowdy. And um, that's just a, a one part of many reasons why everyone up here loves playing in Macon. This one's for the coach. I know uh, playing in Peoria, he might have, their, their coach, and I won't even say his name, might have the most SPHL wins, but were you quick to remind him that you have more championships? <laughs> and if you didn't, rest assured, we'll remind him this weekend. I did. I, uh, that's funny. <laughs> I didn't, uh, you know, I usually I'll go in and talk to other coaches after games, but John Gee's one guy I, I usually don't go in a lot, but I'll definitely make sure I, I tell him that. <laughs> I, I am 1-0 against him in playoffs, so that's the I, I know you will. That's, that's why I love you guys. Yeah, we're not doubting you. <laughs> Sean, you've got any, uh, are you going to be able to, at the games this weekend? Do you have any signs? It's unfortunate. I, I, uh, I was available for Saturday, but I have our do or die pl uh, playoff game for my beer league is that day at oh. the same time. So mm -hmm. I, I have to go do that one. Sure. <coughs> Missed your signs this season. You had a good one, though. It was, uh, oh, that was his doing? You just were the bearer? Got it. <laughs> All right, guys, anything else? <laughs> uh, you guys are generous. These guys are really hungry up here. Um, all right, so we're going to wrap the show up now. Just uh, ask a couple of questions about the upcoming weekend here. Uh, and then, as always, we're going to do a trivia question. Whoever can get the question right will win an autographed souvenir puck from these two gentlemen. Um, first thing I want to ask you, Coach, is uh, about the trade the team made today. You brought in a defenseman, Ben Campbell, from the Knoxville Ice Bears in exchange for future considerations. Um, what sort of intrigued you about Ben, and what do you think he can bring to the team? Um, I, I know I needed to add depth mm -hmm. on the back end. So uh, Ben's a you know, young kid out of college. He's... Um, a little mo mobile defenseman, which I think we could could use right now, and um, going to give him every opportunity here to to make an impression on us and, and our team, and um, hopefully it all works out and he, and he brings something that we need. And um, I was definitely uh, interested in giving him this shot and talking to him on the phone today. Was, you know, we had a great conversation. Mm -hmm. um, he's excited to get here. Um, um, anytime you can bring in a young kid that's hungry and wanting to prove himself is always good and hopefully pushes our guys that are already here as well. So that was kind of the main reason why uh, I did it as well. Yeah, no doubt. And I was able to uh, finally get a hold of, of Evan and figure out what jersey number he's going to wear. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you who are wondering, he'll be number 16. So number 16, watch out for him this weekend. He'll be making his Mayhem debut, uh, the new defenseman, Ben Campbell, for the Mayhem. Last question, Coach. Um, we mentioned it earlier in the show. Kevin Entma was called up to the Orlando Solar Bears in the ECHL. Uh, there was definitely some sadness among our fan base. Um, we're obviously very happy for him, but certainly some concern um, be just because of how well he's played since he's been in Macon. But it sounds like you've got the, you know, you're in the loop on why that might be very temporary. Uh, if you wouldn't mind just sort of sharing the situation that's going on in the, in the Orlando system <laughs> that uh, might sort of reassure some of the fans here. Yeah. Um, Obviously, us coaches, we talk all the time. So um, when they called me, uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning and the NHL are playing overseas in Sweden. So they're taking an extra goalie, um, taking three goalies with them just in case something happened, and they're, they're all the way over there. So that kind of trickled down, obviously, through the leagues. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, Etma's a kid that deserves it anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, he's played outstanding every game. He's been here in Macon, so 
Um, when they gave me the call, they reassured me what was going on and it'd be a temporary thing. Um, you know, and I told them, I said, go up, go up and do your thing, get the experience. And even if you don't play a game, soak everything up from up there and, and bring it back and continue to, to do your thing. So it's a good experience for him. I'm happy for him. And I'm sure these guys are as well. And um, we got to do our job and just pick it up, pick up the slack for him. And, um, you know, Patino's, like I said, this gives him a chance to prove what he can bring to our team. And mm -hmm. um, he's only been able to play one game. So um, this is a huge weekend for him. So, and he knows that. I think he can feel it. And um, I'm sure he's, he's excited for the, for the weekend. Yeah, Patino's uh, only played that one. That was his first professional game, by the way, against the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. Uh, given the fact that it was his pro debut, very solid um, in the shootout, he stopped all but one shot. So uh, really promising goaltender we've got in Alex Patino's. And for Kevin Etma, it's, it's always tough as a fan at this level because you want him to go up and play well and perform. But at the same time, you, <laughs> you know, you've come to grow attached to him a little bit, and we want to see him back here in Macon, obviously. So um, we'll see what happens there. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for all your questions. I uh, hope you've enjoyed your meals tonight. Uh, the last question I'm going to have is a trivia question. Uh, and the question is this. What was Stephen Pirog's off-season occupation? Let's see who's been reading the programs. <laughs> Thanks for not saying that into the mic. <laughs> was that two weeks in a row for you? Yeah, really <laughs> Congrats, Sal. He's got it. Construction. Nice. All right, guys. Thanks so much for enjoying our third episode of Line Change of the Season. We hope to see you again next week. Thank you. Yeah. Just make sure I don't